We're drowning in data, but starving in wisdom. Shoes. And then I'm heading down to the conference center where I'm giving the opening speech. I'm talking about mastering the fourth industrial revolution. I'm in front of the Tokyan Metropolitan Government building, which is quite high. And of course, the posters already show you what is the key focus for the next couple of years. Tokyo 2020, the Olympic Games are coming to Tokyo and there's a lot of effort put into that. So we're excited to see what's going to happen here in Tokyo. Now, reaching for a distant star. Don't stop now. So I'm here at the Sky Conference Center in Shinjuku and I need to go up here, 30th floor. So I just found a Sky Elevator, highest point of this building and there is a conference center up there where I'm holding my speech. So let's go there. and it reached its Gutenberg moment. So just like the printing press back in the 15th century has liberated knowledge by written words, and the smartphone and digital has liberated and freed the people. So I think this meeting is important and it's also important because we have to look at the future. The future is something relevant. Because people make decisions today based on the vision of the future they have. So if you are able to change the vision of the future, you can actually and ultimately change the decision made today. I'm just finished with my speech here in Tokyo and the audience was filled with participants from a software company, a global software company, market leader in a specific niche, in a, in a specific field, and they are in the market since the 80s. So they are the pioneers of the software. They revolutionized and changed their platform back in the 90s, and, and now still they are market leader in the space. So a key challenge for this company is how to reinvent themselves. How do you create a company culture to sustain for the next coming years? How do you create um, a development environment where your product development team can thrive and use new thinking and new tools rather than looking back what they already built? How do we actually overcome these barriers, barriers of innovation? And, and most of the time their own employees are blocking their future success. They are blocking ways because they're afraid to do something different. They're afraid of changing things. How do you create a moonshot? How do you create 10 times more benefit to your clients? Um, that's kind of the moonshot thinking uh, at Silicon Valley mindset, which uh, somebody of the audience asked me about. And they wanted to understand how does Google or Facebook, any Silicon Valley company who's already been so large with so many employees keep on innovating. They're looking for a radical solution. So they're taking the huge problem 
they're finding the right technology, how to solve the problem, and then they're brave enough. They're not afraid to overcome um, and use something completely new. So it's a radical solution. It's about the powerful questions. So I want to mention a couple of these powerful questions um, when you talk about digital transformation. First of all, how do you keep up with the speed of innovation? A lot of companies are struggling with digital transformation, basically shifting their business model, their leadership decisions and the whole technology, a new era of digital age. Basically, it's the fourth industrial revolution. Every industry will be fully transformed and disrupted sometimes even disrupted or changed from the ground up. So you either adapt or you die. I talk about digital technology trends, exponential technology, emerging technology, trends which are kind of easy to predict. If you talk to scientists, computer researchers, they can basically say what would be technically possible. Tokyo is preparing for the Olympics dramatically. So that's just one example of emerging technology trends. So if you look at what's going to be happening in 2020 here in Tokyo, it's quite incredible. First of all, they're building a fleet of autonomous cars. Mobile payments will be realized also with facial recognition and facial payments. Um, then there will be new security, cyber security solutions introduced and a whole lot of fleet of service robots uh, ready to serve the people attending the Olympics in 2020. So there are a lot of things and um, technology trends which are very predictable. That's kind of the easy part of digital transformation. What companies are struggling are with three other elements I explained in my talk as well. First of all, it's about the digital leadership. Are you making the right decisions? Um, are you changing from hierarchy to network? From think and talk to trial and error, from fully control and rules to collaboration and sharing environment. And then on the other hand, there's the business models. Are you adapting your business models to the new environment? Are you ready to roll out completely new ways of doing revenues, of selling your product to the clients? And the third part is your clients, digital society. How are consumers and your clients adapting? They're very demanding. You have to understand from a consumer point of view, they're used to push a button and get a service instantly. In the B2B world, it's very similar. They're just so used to get a service instantly. Why don't can't they have it in a business environment as well? So we have a very demanding society, uh, digital users, they are um, very well educated, they can get access to any information much quicker than before. So they probably come to you with uh, a solution in mind and you can make much quicker sales, but you have to deliver the right product as well. So it's about the human factors around technology development, which are more critical and harder to predict. In my concept, there's basically the digital trends in the middle. These are exchangeable um, and predictable. You can talk to the scientists and around there, there are the human factors, the things which are harder to predict because you don't know how um, your leadership will make the right decisions. You are not sure about the business model and you're not sure how your clients will react. Are they ready for it? Are they willing to, to do the changes? And these are kind of the human factors of the digital transformation process. There are over 51 Fortune 500 companies just in Tokyo. So that's unique. There's nobody in the world where so many large companies are coming together in one city. But of course, I mean, Tokyo is the most popular city in the world. 38 million people living here. Um, but due to the fact that there are so many large companies, they are also innovating a lot. They have the innovation teams, innovation labs, and they're trying to create an outside of the box thinking. They are trying to innovate from inside of the company, kind of an incubator um, 
they are trying to learn from startups how they accelerate, how they get started, how they build business models, and how to uh, actually adapt to the new speed of innovation. And that's interesting to see. So whenever you've got the chance to, talk, to come to Tokyo, visit the innovation labs of the large companies. We're drowning in data and starving wisdom. There's a lot of talk about digital transformation and you have to figure out what is the relevant questions to ask. If you're aware of your powerful questions, if you're aware of the things you need to ask, then you might find the right answers. So a lot of talking makes me hungry and it's uh, back to some sushi time here in Tokyo before I leave and head out of the city tomorrow morning. It was great being here and I enjoyed the spirit here of Japan and it was great that you joined me on this journey. See you soon again. Yeah.